guys welcome back to another video so in this video we're going to look at the cop copy buffer yeah copy buffer and let's see what it does so if i just no f1 the copy buffer gets data of a specified buffer of a certain indicator in the necess necessary quantity um so Copy buffer, this helps us here when we are working with indicators. So the first thing to do is always to define your indicator handle. In this case, it's of type integer. It's usually of type integer. Then when you get your on init function, you have to what? Now, you have to give the indicated uh, handle a specified, of course, indicator handle. Then you have to choose the type of indicator you want, you want to work with. So usually indicators, you need for you to get access to indicators, you have to start with small letter I, right? Small letter I, then it's I, then you can, let's say we want to use the moving average, we can say I, M, you see, you see your MA, which is the moving average, you see your MACD, I momentum, I MFI. Let's say we wanted to access our RSI, we type I, R, S, there is, or we can say stochastic, I stock, stock stochastic, there, there is. You see, so this is how you access your, um, access or, or even give the indicator handle um, the data or information for a specified indicator, you see. So, but then again, that's not why we, 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 we in this video. So in this video, we're just going to explain the copy buffer. So the copy buffer, takes in five parameters. Firstly, it gives, or basically it helps us to give information to an indicator or access information from an indicator, you see. So now, since we know that the copy buffer takes in five parameters, we are going to look at the indicator, uh, the parameters that it takes in. So the first parameter that it takes in is the handle's name. In this case, my handle's name is indicator handle. As you can see there, it is the indicator handle. And then it also takes in what? The buffer number. So the buffer number can be zero in this case if we are working with an RSI. And RSI only has one line, right? Yeah, only has one line. So usually, so let's, let's actually just have a look at it. Um, F1. So I'll just type I, RSI. So here, an RSI has... Um, Buffer number, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, find out, I'm trying to see. Let's use something else. Um, so, yeah, it only has one buffer. One buffer, yes, it only has one buffer. So, let's see. Mm, I don't want to. I'm not going to explain the RSI in depth right now, but let's try and see the I stochastic. So as you can see, the buffer number for the main line for the for stochastic is zero. The buffer number for the main line or signal line is one. So the main line is zero, signal line is one. Right? That's just an example I want to show you. So an indicator usually has a main line or signal line, or it just has one line, which is sometimes the main line. In this case, we could just say zero, or we can just say main line, right? Depending on what, if you are working with the stochastic, you can say what? Main line, if you wanted to access the main line. And then after the main, uh, getting the buffer number, you know, you have to look at your starting position. What is your starting position? If we go back to our chart, um, sorry about that. So if we go back to our chart, the current candlestick is the starting position. So it's in position zero. If I choose position zero, let me see. See, I chose position zero. So if I was to choose position one, then it will look at this candlestick before the current one. So remember guys, for you to gain access to the candlestick, the current one is always zero. Then the one after it is one, then two, three, four, five, six. So your starting position is where you want to collect data from, or the starting position for you to collect data. So if we want to start collecting data from the first candlestick, we're going to choose this one. 
If we want it to be the zero candlestick, it's going to be the current one. You see, it's in position zero. The next one is one, two, three. That type of thing. I hope it makes sense. So I want it to start collecting information from the current candlestick, which is at position zero. So yes, I choose position zero. And then after that, we have this here. So after this here, the starting position, we have the number of candlesticks you want checked. So if I said one, it means that I only wanted to check one candlestick. But if I choose five, it will look at from starting position zero all the way to five candlesticks. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. You see, um, one, two, three, four, five. So basically like that, it will look at the five previous candlesticks. If I was to choose 10, it will look at the 10 previous candlesticks, you see. So, and then lastly, we have the um, array in which in which the value is stored. So after the, 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 the data has been collected, right, we want to store it in an inside an array. So as you can see here, I defined my array right here. So any if all information collected will be stored in this array, and then we can use this array now to access information concerning our indicator. You see, so I hope that makes sense. After this video, you'll see that in the next few videos, I'll be explaining the RSI, the stochastic oscillator, the moving average, and then we're going to use the copy buffer, then you'll understand a bit more what I mean. So you need to watch this video though, so it helps you understand at least what the copy buffer is about. Because in the next video, we're going to use the copy buffer to access information and also give information to our, our, our if I can say, indicator handle. Yes, for us to buy or sell or whatever.